So um, this map kind of gives you an idea of what we're talking about here in terms of Roman expansion. Um, you can see uh, Rome around 500 BCE is very, you know, limited to the surrounding area around the city. Um, within the next 250 years or so, you know, they're able to overthrow the Etruscans, bring Italy proper under their control. Um, Roman expansion really begins, though, with the start of the First Punic War. These are the wars against the city of Carthage, which you can see here in North Africa. Carthage was a former Phoenician province or a Phoenician colony that grew, eventually, you know, gained independence from the Phoenicians and went on to establish a pretty major trading empire. And as Rome grows, um, the Carthaginians and the Romans begin fighting over Sicily, Corsica, other islands in the Mediterranean. And this begins a series of wars known as the Punic Wars over about a hundred year period, where Rome goes on to essentially crush Carthage um, so badly so that at the end of the Third Punic War, um, Rome basically levels Carthage down to nothing. Um, they leave no one in the city. The city is knocked down brick by brick. Uh, the Roman commander in charge is said to have plowed the ground with salt so that nothing would ever grow there again. And so that the city of Carthage would never exist. And they basically... The, the goal was to erase Carthage from human memory. Now, um, by the end of that Third Punic War and the destruction of Carthage, you see the amount of expansion that Rome has undergone. Um, the Punic Wars turn them into not only a, a land power, but also a naval power. Um, Rome is forced to build a large navy to compete with the Carthaginians and to invade Carthage itself. Um, so by the end of the Third Punic War, um, Rome has become, you know, a major power in this area. Um, by the death of Julius Caesar, um, most of Europe has been brought under control, large chunks of North Africa. Um, by the time Octavian Augustus turns it into an actual empire I mean essentially most of everything you see on this map here is going to be under roman control now that kind of begs the question well how does rome do this and the way that rome does this is through the legion um all of rome's power begins with and ends with the legion um unlike the greeks Rome has a standing professional army, meaning that these men are not, you know, farmers. These men are not blacksmith. These men are not, you know, citizens who simply come out and fight in times of need. This is an incredibly professional, highly skilled, highly trained, professionally equipped, massively funded army. They do nothing else but fight. Um, now, early on, the Roman legion is recruited strictly from the Roman population because, again, the Romans see all outsiders as barbarian, as unable to, you know, exist or understand Roman culture and Roman way of life. And for most of the classical era, they are the greatest army in existence. Um, everywhere they go, they have a massive logistical train with thousands of slave laborers. Um, there's also, um, you know, this kind of commitment that where when the Legion isn't fighting, they become construction workers and engineers. They build roads, they build forts, they build bridges. Uh, basically, they build their way into power. Um, anything that the army needs 
in order to support it or anything that it needs to enforce its power in the region, the Legion itself just goes ahead and builds it. Now, um, besides just war, Rome is incredibly efficient at integrating conquered territory into their empire quickly. Um, they go about this in a number of different ways, um, obviously bloodshed being the first, but once the war is over and the land has been conquered, the Romans set out about building their way of life around these so-called barbarian people. Um, they build stadiums for games, libraries uh, to educate. They build sewers and aqueducts, roads uh, to win over public support. They build um, arenas to hold gladiatorial conquests and public educate, you know, public executions. Um, the legionnaires themselves begin marrying into the population and having children with these, you know, recently widowed women. Um, you know, basically they're trying to take this newly conquered land and these newly conquered people and in a really short period of time, turn them into Romans to, you know, to civilize the uncivilized. Um, another, you know, rather disturbing way that the Romans, uh, help to maintain power and integrate was they would oftentimes kidnap or force the surrender of the sons of high ranking local officials. Um, and then they would then take those sons off to Rome, essentially holding them hostage and re-educate them in Roman mythology, Roman way of life. Um, basically trying to breed the barbarian or re-educate the barbarian out of them. Um, so where does all of this warfare and building and education, where does it all lead? Um, what it leads to is the empire and the Pax Romana, which we talked about. Okay. Thanks to the basically undefeatable nature of the Roman legion, thanks to an incredibly efficient bureaucracy that is supported by the world's largest, most intricate infrastructure um, at the time, um, thanks to a very strict and very well-enforced code of Roman law, um, Rome's status is at least for several hundred years, unchallenged in the classical world. Um, and again, this is what we call the Pax Romana. Um, Rome's enemies are few and far between. Those that challenge them are generally crushed. Um, and this brings stability to, like I said, about 60 million people around the Mediterranean. Um, trade flourishes, Rome um, takes advantage of Asian trade routes, especially through their conquests in the Middle East, to buy luxuries as, from as far away as India, China. Um, by conquering Mesopotamia and Egypt, that gives Rome access to the Fertile Crescent and the Nile River Valley. These become what's known as the breadbasket of the Roman Empire. This is where their grain and their wheat is grown and then shipped around the empire to feed this massive population. Culturally, the Romans um, explode during this time period, art, theater, literature, um, you know, Romans begin, you know, molding their educational model after the Greek system and Greek rationalism. Um, they expand upon Greek knowledge themselves, usually not the philosophical side, but more the scientific and the mathematic because, you know, it holds practical purposes for their empire. You see the invention of, uh, you know, some pretty important uh, things come out of this era, namely concrete, um, which is the backbone of the Roman infrastructure, as well as some pretty, pay, some pretty big innovations in uh, warfare, namely the ballista and the trebuchet. 